if you use LinkedIn for your professional network, I'm sure you receive messages from sales reps, from recruiters, as well as from educational programs wanting you to pay lots of money to join them. Sometimes on LinkedIn, you also receive social engineering phishing scams. And what they do is they try to collect information from you to potentially use information to access other online accounts. Recently, I mentioned this phishing scam to a buddy of mine, and he mentioned that he fell for something similar during the summer. And the scam was to sign up and beta test new software and be paid doing it. And so he signed up for it. The product company that he signed up for never actually got back to him. Instead, three days later, um, his Facebook and Instagram account got hacked where the hackers were using his profiles to send messages and DMs to his friends to try and get them to email or transfer money to him. In today's video, I'm going to use the social engineering phishing scam that I received on LinkedIn and some of the red flags to look for, how to recognize them, but also how to do a reverse Google image search of a profile picture to see if that person matches who they say they are. And for fun, I also reverse image myself and you can see that at the end of the video and see what results come up and, and you'll be a bit surprised. All right, so if you find this video helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up, like the video, and consider subscribing to my channel for similar content. The message was received from a Hattie Gunter, and the profile looked suspicious already. It stated that she was unemployed at Robert Half, and I thought that was strange. Why would you say you're unemployed uh, at an organization? Come on, hackers, why would you create a profile that says you're unemployed, and yet you're pitching me a make money opportunity when you yourself are unemployed? That doesn't make sense. So hackers, that's a minus one towards you guys. As I further investigated her profile, she didn't list any job titles, job activities, and she only had three contacts when I first saw her profile, which is a bit of a red flag. I decided to do a reverse Google search of her picture to see if that picture matches who she says she is. Some of you might have already caught on right away and know who this picture belongs to. Um, it turns out to be someone named Miranda Kerr. Uh, I still don't know who she was, and so I Googled her, and apparently she's a famous Australian model. Good for you. Bravo, scammer, bravo. You sure targeted me very well. You probably looked at my picture and went, this guy looks old, he looks boring. He has no idea who the supermodel is. He'll probably fall for this scam if I'm putting a pretty picture in front of the profile and they'll sign up for the survey. So, you know, that's a plus one back to you, hackers. Like, um, you're right, I had no idea who this person was and I could have fallen for this. So here's the social engineering phishing message I received from a Hattie Gunther. So I'm going to break down the message for you. So the first part of the message goes, I trust you are doing great. I came across your profile and was impressed with your work history. So that what they do is they try to pump you up to make you feel special. And who doesn't want to feel special? Participate in the survey. The results will be published in our Tech Advisor publication. However, they don't give a link to the publication. And a quick Google search indicates it's a tech review website and nothing to do with the IT industry. So the next part here is the hook. You'll be compensated for your time. You'll be paid $20 to $50 per completed survey. This is a great way to earn extra income. And I have to give them credit here. They didn't say Amazon or iTunes gift cards, which would right away throw a red flag up. And then they also include a link for you to sign up for the survey. So here's the catch. The information that you enter in the survey is going to be used by the hackers to try and gain access to your other online accounts. So they collect personal demographic information, like your first name, your last name, your middle name, you know, your date of birth, your address. And then what they do is they also collect security question responses. And these security question responses are a bank of questions that you use to reset passwords. And so other companies and organizations use similar questions in these banks um, to do password resets. And that's what they're collecting from you. And once they collect it, they either use the information to gain access to your accounts or they sell the information to other hackers who will gain access to your accounts. What the hackers are hoping for is the password you use to sign up for the survey is the same password you use for other accounts, such as your social media accounts, your email accounts, or even your banking accounts. And if that doesn't work, they will attempt password resets using the information you filled out in the security questions section such as, what was the name of your first pet? So the name of your first pet is actually a pretty common security reset questions for organizations. I recently signed up for the CRA online account to access my uh, tax revenue accounts. And uh, what is the name of your first pet is actually one of those questions that they ask you to fill in for security questions. So if the hacker has that information, they can actually reset, uh, they, would, they would know the answer to what is the name of your first pet and be able to go ahead and try and reset my CRA password. 
If you have one password for all of your accounts, you're screwed. The hackers now have access to all of your online accounts and they can do whatever they want with them once they have it. They can actually lock you out of your account and it'll take a while for you to get it back. So don't do it. I know it's a pain to have different passwords for different accounts, but it's the best way to keep you safe. And in a future video, I am going to recommend a password manager to kind of keep track of all that and it's easy to use. So uh, subscribe if you haven't, but I will be talking about a password manager in, in the future. So thank you for watching and I hope you found the video helpful. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show a short clip of me doing a Google reverse image search of my headshot from LinkedIn. And uh, you guys will get a, quite a laugh probably from the results that happen. All right, so thanks again for watching and until next time. Thank you.